Okay, so on the advanced information, it says for paper two, there is a geometric sequence and with it, it says trig identities. So I found this question from a old international A-level paper. So let's have a look at it. It could be something like this. So we've got a geometric sequence. Now, if we think about a geometric sequence, that's when you're multiplying by ratio each time. So your first term is A, your second term is A times that ratio, and your third term will be AR squared. So the connection between these is that the second one divided by the first one will be the same as the third one divided by the second one. So let's write that out. So for part A, we're going to have cos theta over sine theta equals 0.5 over cos theta. So we can cross multiply, so these can come up. We get cos squared theta equals 0.5 sine theta. Now we want everything in sine, so I'm gonna replace cos squared with one minus sine squared. And now I'm gonna multiply everything by two. And then I move everything to one side and I've got my solution there. I'm now going to find theta. So I'm gonna solve this, I'm just gonna stick it into my calculator. A is two, B is one, C is minus two. And it's going to tell me sine theta equals either minus one plus root 17 over four, um, which gives me 0 0.78077 or minus one point something, which I'm gonna ignore because that's gonna give me a solution that's impossible because sine has to be either greater than, cannot be greater than one or less than minus one. So I do inverse sine of this, so shift sine of my answer, and I get 51.33. But I want something between 90 and 180. So I know for sine, the rule is always 180 minus. So I do 180 minus, and I get 128.7. And I cross that out. Then it says, prove that this series is convergent. So anything is convergent if your R is between minus one and one. So essentially if it's a fraction, because everything gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. That's what this means. So that's when we can use, this is by the way from your formula book, that's when we can find the sum of infinity because something's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So how will I find my R? Well, if we have a look, that's effectively what we were doing here. We had the second one over the first one. So cos theta over sine theta, but I know that theta is 128.7, so I'm going to do cos, so r equals 128.7 over sine 128.7, and I get minus 0 0.8. And then you'll say as r is between minus 1 and 1, the series is convergent. And then part d, we're just plugging numbers into the formula. So the sum to infinity will be my a, which is going to be sine 128.7 over 1 minus my r. So it's 1 minus minus 0 0.8. When I plug that in, I get 0 0.43. I hope that's been useful um, and I really hope something similar comes up for you guys.